Hello and welcome to today's lesson. This is going to be an advanced vocabulary lesson because, well, spring is right around the corner. I, I wanted to talk to you about some different advanced words that are related to spring. These are words that I think you should definitely know. So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about some advanced spring vocabulary. I think some of the words and phrases you will be familiar with. And the way that I, I want to do this is I'm going to present this to you in, like a little bit of a quiz. So I'm going to give you like a, a question, a sentence, and I want you to think of the answer. And then, of course, uh, I'll give you a moment to think about it. And then I will tell you the answer, what the missing word or phrase is. Before we begin, I do want to make a quick little announcement, and that is that enrollment for my speaking course is now open. Um, you can click on a link down in the description. It's, it's a speaking course. It's all about trying to help you speak confidently, speak clearly, speak naturally. It's an eight-week course in which uh, there are different topics each week. And the other thing I wanted to tell you is that you can use the code. Uh, it's right up here at the top. Uh, I'm kind of blocking it. Speak 20 to get $20 uh, off. So uh, I'll kind of come back and mention this once more at the end. But yes, enrollment is now open. Classes are going to begin uh, the first week of April. And spaces are limited, so check that out if you're somebody who would like to practice and improve your speaking skills. So uh, as I go through the... And then... Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so... My apologies, I think the, the connection dropped for just a moment and then now we're back, okay? So we're, we're talking about advanced spring vocabulary and the first question that I have for you is right here, all right? So this is kind of a uh, fill in the blank. What, what do you think? Uh, what, what word would best complete this sentence? I love the warm days when there's a nice, gentle, mm, what do you think? What word best completes that, that sentence? Yes, everything, we're, we're back now. <laughs> Everything's all good. A little technical uh, difficulties there for just a moment. So let me get the microphone here. So what do you guys think? Um, this is a common collocation too. I think when you're, when you hear, you feel it gentle. And of course the picture I think is a little bit of a, a giveaway. So just to, uh, let you know, yes, uh, Lolly, correct. Good to see you, Lolly. Uh, Takayo, good to see you. Um, Vivian, Angela, Yashar, welcome. Nice. The, the correct answer is breeze. So we're talking about like the wind. It's a gentle wind. But instead of people t saying gentle wind, that's not a common collocation. I think in the springtime, uh, you, you have these days where there's a nice gentle breeze and everybody loves that. I really love these, the gentle breeze. The next one is right here. And this is just, well, the question, what are those? What do you call those? I've given you the first letter. Okay. And then I'll talk to you. Well, I don't want to give it away, but what, what do you call those in English? That that's the first letter the, that you can see, which is G. All right, what do you think? Let me know, write your answers in the chat, or like I said, even if you're watching this later, write your answers in the comments, all right? So this is one that I, I told you, this is advanced vocabulary, so it's a little more challenging. Um, and this is something I don't, I don't wear these, um, but, and, and I, the other thing I would tell you is that they do have, different names as well, but I think commonly they're known as what? <laughs> so was, this is the, the question mark. Hey, that's all good. No, no problem. Alex, I have no idea. Okay. Um, Mo, Moisir Fennan, you got it. Excellent. That, you got the correct. And uh, Svetlana, sorry if I mispronounced names. Angela, yes. So th these are called galoshes. And you may be wondering, well, what is it that makes a galosh uh, different than rain boots or whatever? They do have different names. The difference is that uh, galoshes specifically, technically, if you want to be more exact, they go around your shoe. 
So galoshes will cover your shoe and they protect your shoes from the rain or the mud, whereas a rain boot would really protect your socks. And under, under like, you just have your socks and then you would put on your rain boots and you'd go outside um, wherever you need to go and you wear them like shoes, whereas galoshes you're going to put over your shoes to protect them from the rain. So that's the slight, a slight difference between galoshes and rain boots. Um, so hopefully, again, this is a new word for you. If you didn't know this, now you do. Those are galoshes and they go over your shoes. Uh, I told you I don't wear them. To be honest, I don't really wear rain boots either. I just, when it's raining, I just go outside in my shoes. So the next question, uh, but again, you think of spring, I, the weather changes. I think it starts to rain a little bit more. Um, so it's something that you would associate with, with spring. This one is more, I, I guess you could say it somewhat specific to the United States, even though I think that other countries have the same break um, this time of year. So just in general, though, it's very common and well known in the United States. Um, a popular one week vacation period is known as what? <laughs> and I'm sure that if you have visited the US or just watching TV shows and movies, it's kind of a, a well known vacation period, mostly associated with school because school is off for one week, families will travel, and we're talking about, yes, excellent, uh, Max, Yashar, Vivian, uh, Lolly, Angela, uh, Kevin, spring break is the phrase. And I think, again, it's mostly associated with schools when school is off for a week and you say, well, it's spring break. And I think in many other countries, there's also a break in the springtime. I don't know if the pe many people would refer to it as spring break, but yes, in the US, you'd say, oh, like, where are you gonna go for spring break? And as you can see in the picture, a popular destination would be just traveling to, to the beach. The next one that I have for you is, and this one I think is a little more challenging. So I'll, I'll be impressed if, uh, if you guys get this one. It's a word that describes weather that is pleasantly warm. So we've already talked about weather a little bit already. Um, a breeze is like a gentle wind, and often you might talk about a gentle breeze. In this case, we're saying the weather, it's pleasantly warm. It's what? It's one word, and this is the word that I, I took it straight from the dictionary as to what this word means. And I told you, I think it's one that, to be honest, I don't often use this word. Um, others might, but you know, if you want to describe weather that's pleasantly warm, which happens in the spring, you would say it's what? And I see one correct answer so far uh, given by Victoria. <laughs> Excellent, that is the word. So you would, I mean, you could, of course, many of you are putting mild. You could describe like, hey, it's, a, you know, the weather's a bit mild, like in terms of it's warm. I think pleasantly would be the kind of the key to say, yes, it is balmy. Balmy means like pleasantly warm that you're, that you enjoy this, the weather that's outside. Um, and typically I think spring, there are days that are pleasantly warm and you could say, yes, it's balmy. Um, outside. So excellent. I see some other correct answers. Uh, Mark, Angela, well done. Alex, perfect. And I told you it's, it's, this is not a word that I uh, often use. Typically, I think many people would just say, hey, it's a nice day outside. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's gorgeous. But again, it's always good to build your vocabulary. It helps with your comprehension. And then you could use it as well. But I, like I said, this is probably a more advanced word because it's not one that you're, you're always gonna hear when it's pleasantly warm outside. But it's all about learning new words. That's what it's all about. So here I gave another sentence. Uh, I provided the picture to give you a little more context. And I maybe I made it a little too easy because I do think these are very common words. And this is true. Uh, this is kind of about myself. Every spring, the mm in the air gives me Hmm. What? What are the two words that would go in those blanks? 
and you could use the picture to help you out. Um, but this is definitely something I would say about myself. Every spring, the mmm in the air gives me what? And these, like I said, these are, I think, definitely more common words, um, words that I definitely think you should know. So excellent, great job, uh, Lolly, perfect, um, <laughs> Sleepwalker, Victoria, uh, MZZ, nice. So the first blank, if you're talking about, like you see the flowers back there, what is in the air? The pollen is in the air. In the spring, um, you know, flowers, everything's blossoming, it's growing, and you have all that pollen in the air. And if you're like me, then it, you could, you get allergies. And it's actually, it's already started for me this year. I've been sneezing a lot yesterday and today, and I'm starting to take some uh, allergy um, medicine for that. So every spring, the pollen in the air gives me allergies, and that's true. So I think these are definitely good words to know, um, especially, especially if you also are somebody who tends to get allergies in the springtime. Then we have this right here. <laughs> this is, this is uh, I guess maybe you could even think it's a little bit of a biology question. Um, this is more challenging. So I've given you these different parts of the flower and I've covered up this one down here, which is actually the more difficult word. Um, so which part of the flower is this? So you see the flower, the flowering stem, the leaf, and then the roots down at the bottom. Which part is covered up? What word is that? Um, excellent. See some more familiar faces. Bamini, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> what do you think? And I, I, I think, I feel like ten, I'm, there's a lot about flowers that I don't know. Um, I know some people may be a bit more familiar with it, so maybe this is a, a little easier for you. Because uh, I am seeing, excellent, uh, a lot of great questions. Uh, are great answers for this one. Yes, Vivian, Victoria, Christine, um, Svetlana, Lolly, Yashar, Bamini, Angela. The correct answer, yes, this is the bulb. So the bulb of a flower in botany, botany is the study of plants, is a modified stem that is the resting stage of certain seed plants. That is not my definition. That is... Uh, from the internet, but to give you an idea of exactly what it is if somebody's talking about the bulb. But many of you got that one, so excellent. Uh, I'm very impressed, well done. Good job. If you got that one right, hit that like button, let me know. <laughs> it tells me how many people are actually participating in the lesson. So this one, um, there could be more than one answer. I, I'm, I'm looking for a synonym. So when you think of the spring, people would think of words like renew, refresh, revitalize. And those are all synonyms for another word that begins with an R. All right. So there, there are actually many R words that are synonyms. These all mean the same thing. Renew, refresh, revitalize. And what other word could you use? That is a synonym for these. And I'm very, uh, very impressed that I uh, see some couple of uh, correct answers already. And this is, this is useful because I think it's always good to build your vocabulary with synonyms. You already know the meaning of one word, and then you can associate with these other ones. And then over time, learn which words are more commonly used to talk about different topics. Something else we cover in the, the speaking course. But in this case, we're talking about spring. And I think a very common word is the one that's missing, like some of you said, which is rejuvenate. Um, that's, the, that's the word that we were looking for, even though there are other R words. So Angela, um, who else? Bamini, Ava, uh, Yipang. So again, sorry if I mispronounced names. Kevin, um, Sleepwalker, nice. Christine. So re rejuvenate means to make someone um, look or feel young and energetic again. And I think this word is often used with spring because you have that word again. 
So every year when spring comes around, it's like uh, people feel rejuvenated. Everybody's going, they're going outside more often. They're doing more activities. And I think it's just part of the, the process. I think a lot, I know I feel that way because you see flowers, trees coming to life again and everything just is like, it's a good word to know with spring, rejuvenate. Uh, the next one that is this one right here. This is, um, I guess it's a little more of a, <laughs> maybe a, a biology question too. Um, so I'm giving you this example, even though it applies to other things as well. Caterpillars change to butterflies, okay? This, uh, this change in form and appearance is known as a what? There is a specific word that talks about a change in like the physical form or appearance, and it is known as a this, okay? So this is the example that I kind of trying to get you to associate with it. A caterpillar changing to a butterfly. You could also use it um, to talk about people as well, that if somebody just changes the way they look, the physical appearance, maybe they color their hair or they get a bunch of tattoos, and you could say, wow, this person just did a complete what? And I see some great answers in there. Yes, I told you it's, you could think of it as a little bit of a biology word, metamorphosis. So a metamorphosis, the meaning of that is a change in one's physical form or appearance. So great job, uh, Max, MZZ, Takayo. We know we've talked about this <laughs> in class, excellent. Uh, Sleepwalker. Uh, and hopefully, again, if, if this is a, a new word for you, that's great. You can kind of just keep it in the back of your mind. But this is one that you would uh, use to describe like this example, a caterpillar changing to a butterfly. It's a metamorphosis. Uh, the next one, right here. <laughs> I thought this picture was funny, so I wanted to include it. It refers to a thorough cleaning of a house or room this time of the year is called a what? And often I think you might hear people use it in the context like, oh, you know, maybe they're, they're cleaning the house. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of a, mm, all right, it's this time of the year. And I think all of us, uh, I think people can relate to it. Also, I think it's part of just <laughs> rejuvenating again and you're doing this thorough cleaning um, this time of the year. And this is a phrase that I'm sure you're familiar with that you've heard before. I see many people writing answers down. Excellent. Um, yes, Lolly, Kevin, uh, Ava Victoria, Yashar, uh, Duke. Uh, we're talking about a spring cleaning. So I think when, when we clean our place, if somebody asks like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, we're just doing a bit of a spring cleaning right now and really trying to clean the place thoroughly. And also I think it's associated with maybe getting rid of some of the things you don't need any longer and you're kind of you know cleaning out the closets a little bit or really trying to throw some things out, make more space and you do a, a spring cleaning. So it definitely is a thorough, thorough cleaning. Perfect. Um, so I think that, like I said, this is a phrase that's pretty common that I think is useful to know this time of the year. Okay, now, um, this is like, well, what do you think? I'm really just giving you uh, two choices. Um, do you, looking at that picture, do you think this plant is sprouting or germinating? What, what do you think? Um, is it sprouting or germinating? And maybe, maybe it's a little bit of a, a trick question. <laughs> and I'll give you a full, uh, just a moment to think about it. And then of course, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. So is this plant sprouting or germinating? What would you say? And I, I guess it's not surprising. Many people are you're saying sprouting. Uh, right now. Kevin's saying germinating, going against the grain. Okay, so let me let me explain. I told you this is a trick question because in this case, for this picture, 
you could use either one. They can be used interchangeably sometimes, sprouting and germinating. I could say that plant is sprouting, um, and I could also say it's, it's germinating. So the specific difference to sprout means to grow from a seed. So since this plant is so small, it's just coming out of the, like, the seed, and you could say it's sprouting. To germinate is to produce buds. Um, so it's also, in this case, it's germinating. So when, when plants are really just starting to come out of the ground, you could really say it's sprouting or germinating. The one distinction I would make is that it's probably more common for people to use the word sprout because you can use this word to talk about other things as well, like uh, some, uh, you know, it's growing quickly. It's really growing. You'd say, wow, they're sprouting. Um, so this word is more common than germinate. So I think most of the time people would probably look at something like a plant, like, oh, it's, it's sprouting. But in this case, you could use either one. So everybody's correct. Um, good job. Everybody got this one. <laughs> if you got this one, then hit that like button. Let me know um, that you were just participating. So to, to put a finer point on what I just said, I told you that I think that sprouting would be more commonly used. If you have words like this and you have a situation in which you're like, okay, these words, they're interchangeable, which one is more common? A great reference is Google Ngram Viewer. And what this is taking is all the, the like written English, um, books, online articles. So you can, it maybe is a little more formal, but you can find stuff on there that's a little more informal. But the reason it is you put the words up there and I put sprout and germinate. And basically it's giving you a graph, a representation of how common, like how frequent the words are used over time. So you can see that germinate in red, sprout is in blue, that for a time period, it seems like from 1860 to 1960, ger people would use germinate more often, especially um, in writing. And over time, it seems like nowadays sprouting is, is more common. So uh, I just wanted to point this out as another reference if you have this situation and you're thinking, which like which word or phrase is more commonly used, you can use uh, Google Ngram Viewer. It's a great resource. And then another one, um, what do you think? What are these called? This is another just visual uh, visual vocabulary, testing your, your knowledge. I think you perhaps are familiar with, uh, with this word. And again, I'm putting it in here. This is advanced spring vocabulary. This is something else that this time of year, um, this is what goes on. Okay, so what do you think? What, what are these called? And I know, like, I feel like <laughs> you start seeing some of those answers in the chat and there is, yes, I remember the word. Um, so hopefully, again, if this could be a new word for you. It's very specific because we're talking about these little guys right here. I know the picture looks big, but they're actually very small. Um, and yes, excellent, great job. Just gonna throw out some names. Kevin, Niha, Vivian, Khalid, Lolly, um, El Negrin, English Glass, Angela, uh, Sleepwalker, Myrna. Uh, so the answer is tadpoles. These are tadpoles. They. The meaning, like the, the small black creature with a large head and a long tail that lives in water and develops into a frog or toad is called uh, a tadpole. And this is something that again happens um, in the springtime. And this would be another example of a metamorphosis, of a change, of a tadpole becoming a frog or a toad would be another example of a metamorphosis, that physical change in appearance. Just wanted to throw that little bit of review in there for you. So I, I know these, I, I just gave you about, I think there were 12 or 13 words. Um, they're right here. So this is the vocabulary list from today, some of the words we talked about. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna put this uh, online for, Members, subscribers, patrons, um, 
may even email this out if you are part of our email community. And you can find that link down below as well. So I, my main goal with these is to make this class a bit more interactive. I hope you learn some new words, a great way to build your vocabulary, especially relating it to um, certain topics. In this case, the time of year. So it's springtime, or it's, getting, it's coming into spring. These are words or phrases that you may hear this time of year that can be useful, or, or you may read them um, if you're reading the newspaper or some other article. I did want to circle back. I told you, um, for those of you who are interested in practicing and improving your speaking skills, uh, the first week of April, I'm starting a new speaking course, um, a new speak up course. It's all about helping you speak confidently, clearly, and naturally. Uh, check out that link down in the description. And I, again, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. The email, this is the course page down here, um, is right down here at the bottom. But on this page, you'll find out a lot more about class times. Um, the cost of the course, it's, somebody is asking, it, it is not free. Uh, this is an eight-week course. It's $159. You can use the code SPEAK20 to get $20 off. Um, and like I said, if you have other questions, uh, you can send me an email. But this, uh, this page try gives you a lot of information as to how it's set up and what all is included. So check that out in the link if, yeah, if you want to speak, if you want to speak with me. And I see I've, you know, some familiar faces who have taken the course. Uh, uh, like Takayo, Yashar, Bamini. Um, I appreciate you guys being here with me today. Again, I hope you learn some new words and phrases. That That is the goal. Thank you, uh, Lolly, Sleepwalker, uh, Aureli, um, Marcella, Aparna. Just throw out some last minute uh, shout outs. Mark, Christine, Kevin, um, Curly, MZZ, Judith. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your weekend. I hope you have uh, a wonderful spring. It's, it's one of my favorite times of the year. And of course, I will see you guys later for another lesson uh, in the future. All right, see you next time. So long.